Hello everyone, R.E.M. here, and it's time for another episode of Dinosaur Days. Today we have Lambiosaurus, which is one of my favorites. Although I think, honestly, all of the dinosaurs are one of my favorites, so I should probably stop saying that at this point. Lambiosaurus was a hadrosaur, or a hoofed duckbill dinosaur. You might know of other hadrosaurs like Corythosaurus or Myosaurus. There are two categories of hadrosaurs. The Sauralophines, which had a solid crest or no crest at all, and the Lambiosaurines, which had a hollow crest. You get one guess as to which category a Lambiosaur fell into. That distinct hollow crest is one of the most unique and compelling aspects of this animal, and the shape is what distinguishes this Lambiosaurus lambiae from the different subspecies under the Lambiosaurus name. This is one of the many dinosaurs where subcategories and subspecies are kind of confusing and debated on at the moment. There are several different crest types seen within specimens, and it's debated whether or not this was due to sexual dimorphism, age, subspecies, or animal health. There are at the moment two main confirmed subspecies, Lambiosaurus lambiae, which is pictured here, and Lambiosaurus magnacrestatus. There were other subspecies put forth, but at this point those have been kind of absorbed into the other categories as juveniles or females. So what is this big hollow crest for? Well, like we've talked about many times before, if something funny is on an animal, it's probably for mating purposes. However, this crest was also probably multifunctional. Given that it was hollow, it probably acted as a sound resonation chamber, which could make sounds louder or more booming, allowing for communication that could be used either for mating calls or for general communication. It's also likely that these crests were brightly colored or differently colored than the rest of the animal, again either for mating or sexual selection purposes, or for species or individual identification in general. This is one of many dinosaurs where I really wish that we could know for sure what it sounded like. I feel like they had such a cool mating call, but we'll never really know. However, there are some people out there, especially here on YouTube, using the newest scientific data to create what we think is really evidence-based dinosaur sounds. I'll link two of those videos from the same person in my description if you want to check it out. I think they're very cool. You'll notice that my Lambiosaurus male here is drawn in an upright bipedal position. As hadrosaurs, it's generally believed that these animals were capable of both bipedal and quadrupedal movement. Most of the fossil footprints from these animals, especially in areas where herds would have gone through, are quadrupedal, all four feet on the ground. However, there have also been tracks found with just two feet on the ground. The rear feet, obviously, that would be something to imagine, right? <laughs> just the front feet. But it's proposed that the stiffness of the bones and joints and ligaments in the tail would allow these animals to rear up and even run on their hind legs if necessary. This probably would not have been their main method of locomotion as these boys were hefty. Depending on the specimen and the subspecies being looked at, these animals were five to seven feet tall at the shoulder, not at their tallest point, at the shoulder, and around 20 to 25 feet long. Their weight estimates also vary quite a bit, but it's all on the heavy side, between 2,000 and 7,000 pounds per individual, and it's estimated that the bulls would have been significantly heavier than the cows. When you're lugging that kind of mass around, you want to spread your body weight as equally and evenly as possible, so it is likely that these animals spent the majority of their time on four legs, using a bipedal stance to scan for danger or run away from danger. Speaking of legs, and I guess feet, you'll notice that the front feet of the Lambiosaurus and the back feet don't really match. That's because the front foot of the Lambiosaurus and other hadrosaurs is considered a sort of proto-hoof. Now, like horses and other hoofed animals today, there are multiple toes that make up this hoof structure, and since these structures fossilize, it's pretty unclear as to whether or not this would have been a three-toed or single-toed hoof. I've seen them drawn both ways, although I will say that recent art is trending towards the single-toe hoof, 
So why did I draw three toes? Well, that's because three toes, it was easier for me to get a cohesive looking foot than with one toe when I tried it in my sketches. And to be honest, I am trying to avoid as many issues in drawing feet and legs as possible because it is already a problem for me. So I am fully willing to admit that the front hoof toes of this animal might not be the most scientifically accurate thing you've ever seen, but I did get them done and they do look semi-coherent, so that's the best we're gonna get at this point. However, I think I will give the single toe hoof a try when I draw my next hadrosaur, which will be coming up in a few episodes, though I do have several dinosaurs on the list before that happens. So, if anyone has any guesses for what hadrosaur will be next on my list, let me know in the comments. I'll give you a hint. The crest looks very different to this one. That's all for this prehistoric foghorn, so remember to smile.